don't worry i'll i'll do that i'm doing that okay. right yeah. now <laughs> all right cool um all right so the talk today is on priority case center with outliers uh this is a joint work with Tomvi Bajpay so she's a PhD student in uh Urbana Champagne and Department Chakrabarty my advisor and Chandra Chakuri Tomvi's advisor okay cool so let's start with uh the definition of case supplier um so the input is a metric space on points f and c so f here stands for facilities think of it as possible facility locations and C stands for clients. So during the talk, I'm going to show squares for facilities and like circles for clients. And then this D is the distance function. Okay, cool. And then you're given an integer K. This K is the K in the problem uh, name, basically. And here's uh, what you're going to find. So you are uh, asked to find a subset of at most K of these possible facility locations. Here, S stands for a solution. Uh, to minimize the maximum distance a point can have to this solution, S. And by that, I mean it's distance to the closest facility in your solution. OK? Cool. Any questions about this? Okay, let me give you an example. So let's say K was three, and you want to like put fire stations in this residential area, let's say. And then let's uh, you want to minimize the maximum distance any point. Let's say these points are like residential places. As to travel to reach a fire station. So here, let's say the farthest point is two miles away. So the value of your objective is two miles, two, basically. So any questions? In general, just interrupt me if you have any questions during the talk. Just feel free to unmute yourself. Okay, cool. All right, so let's see some applications. So you can think of this problem as an unsupervised learning problem. So think about it that each data entry is actually a point in the space and you've defined a similarity metric between your data points so that the more similar they are, the closer they are in this metric, okay? And then you would want to group them, let's say into K balls uh based on their similarities so the closer points are more similar so they're grouped together okay cool so that was the clustering application you can think of it uh, as a facility location problem so let's say this is the layout of some clients in a map and then you would want to let's say put three depot locations and you can choose from these squares and then let's say each of these depot locations can cover a certain radius in one unit of time. And you would want to put them such that all the clients are covered in this time, let's say. So they can be reached by your vehicles in this time. OK, cool. So let's see, what do we know about this problem? We already know that this problem is NP hard to approximate better than 3. And what do I mean? It's uh, what, what is a 3 approximation event? So let's say the optimal solution was actually too much so let's say this was the optimal solution uh then a three approximation is a solution that covers everyone in distance within distance at most six okay so that's what i mean by a three approximation it's np hard to do better than a three approximation okay and it does have a three approximation actually it's uh by Huckman and Schmoyz from 1985. okay cool all right, so what is priority case supplier? OK, so the input is basically the same as case supplier. In addition to that, you're given these radii RV for each point, V and C. And so each point demands for a center to be opened in this ball of this radius. So for example, this point, it demands a center to be opened in this radius. This other point has a bigger radius. So it can afford to travel further, let's say. So if you open this facility, it basically satisfies both of these clients because they intersect in this. Okay. All right. So what is the goal? The goal is to find a subset of at most K of these places to open. 
minimizing this alpha, this alpha can think of it as a dilate, dilation factor. So basically it says, if you dilate this radii by alpha, then you can find a solution that intersects all of these bonds. Okay, any questions? Is the problem statement clear? Okay, maybe, oh, one more thing, of course, is that if uh, these radii are, are uniform, this is basically just a case of flatter problem. Okay, cool. So let me give you an example to like motivate this. Um, so let's think of the facility location instance. So this is a part of the Dartmouth campus. And here we have an arena of course, an arena is an important landmark. So you would want to, let's say, you want to decide where to put bus stops in this campus, okay? So you would want to put a bus stop in, let's say, I don't know, distance 20 meters from this uh, arena, okay? And let's say, you know, you have, this is the graduate student housing, okay? Then you'd be like, okay, you know, maybe for graduate students, you know, you can, have them walk more, maybe it's okay to like have them walk for 10 minutes to reach a bus stop. So let's say you draw this big ball around this. And like, of course, these balls intersect in this uh, area. And that is why we have a bus station here. So it basically satisfies your priority requirements. Okay, priorities. Cool. All right. Okay, so what do we know about this? So very recently, John Cannon and Lutz uh, in 420 uh, studied a special case of this problem uh, in the context of individual fairness. So what is this special case? So they set the RVs for a V to be its distance to the N over Kth closest neighbor. So uh, why is that? So they say that, hey, you know, when you're clustering the points into K clusters, mostly in the facility location context, you would, uh, the average cluster size, let's say would be N over K, right? So you would think that uh, every uh, point V, if you look at it, the distance, it's, it has to travel to reach the N over Kth neighbor. Uh, it deserves to have a centered open in that instance, in that distance. So it's only fair basically to have uh, centers to be closer to people in like more dense areas in a city. That's the motivation. Okay, cool. And they give a three approximation for this problem. So actually this problem has a three approximation by Plesnik from 1986. So that's like one year after Hartmann Schmoyz. And people have missed this paper, I think. Cool. All right. So K supplier with outliers. So this is just K supplier, no priorities yet. Okay, so let's say one person decides to like move out of the town to live in the learners. Okay. And this is uh, the solution you had prior to this move, let's say for like putting fire stations in this town. So let's look at the case of flyer objective. So the case of flyer objective wants to minimize the maximum distance any point can have to your solution, right? So like, if you look at this point's distance to your solution, this can be arbitrarily large. So you would have to move one of your uh, fire stations to that like one place in the wilderness to like satisfy this one person okay and well as you can see k supplier itself um is uh not robust to outliers okay so having outliers can drastically change the look of your solution right so okay let's make it robust so the input is the same as before you have this extra parameter m i'm gonna tell you what this is so this time, in addition to your solution S, 
you have to identify a set of points you would mark as inliers. So basically, you would only care about the objective on these set of points. Morally, you're basically just throwing away the rest as outliers. Okay. So in the previous example, if you just allow like this one outlier, then you're good. Okay, any questions here about the problem definition? Okay, cool, let's move on. So uh, because case supplier is a special case of case supplier with outliers, you already know that it's NP hard to approximate this with a factor better than three. Okay, cool. Actually, it does have a three approximation. It's uh, from two papers, 2017. One is Chakrabarty Gorland, Krishna Swami. One is Harris Lee, Pencil and Sri uh, Nivasan and Trin. So out of in here is not the co-authors. All right, cool. So that's great. What happens if we put priorities on this? So, you know, uh, you have this priority radii. Your outlier also has this priority, but you're going to basically ignore it. So what do I mean by that? So you're given the input just like before and with uh, the radii. And your goal is to identify the inliers. But this time, you would only care to, like, satisfy the neighborhood constraints for your inliers. Okay, so you basically just ignore this one point. Uh, I have a question. Yes, go ahead, please. Uh, okay, so in the priority case, you assume that there, there exists some feasible solution that covers everyone within the given uh, uh, radius. Hmm. So are you asking if, like how we check feasibility, is it? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I, I assume it's a stupid technical question, but... No, no, no question is stupid. <laughs> So uh, actually, later on, I, I'm going to tell you how we run this algorithm. So our algorithm is an LP rounding. So first of all, you have to solve an LP. And if the LP yeah. is infeasible, then you know it's infeasible. OK, yeah, that's, OK, that's thank you. It depends on like what your algorithm is, I think. Cool. Awesome. Any other questions? Okay, so this problem is intimately related to this other problem called chance K coverage. And this is also by Harry Settle and Arvind is a co-author. Uh, all right, so what's the input? So the input is the metric space and your integer K and your radii. But this time you're given priority PVs for each of the clients. So what are these priorities? So here, instead of finding this one solution S of size and most K, you define a distribution over all, like, all such solutions. And then you would want to minimize the dilation such that. So here's the thing. If you draw a, a solution from this distribution, you would want each point V to be covered with probability at least P of V. OK, so that's the thing. So it's some sort of having outliers, it's a different way of having outliers. And they give an approximation for this. Okay, so first let's ponder a bit and see like how it compares to uh, priority case center with outliers, okay? So here, for example, if you like put your PVs to be um, over size of C, then you know that in expectation, you're gonna cover endpoints in your solution within this distance, right? But um, I'm not sure about uh, concentration bounds. I'm not sure if they have any concentration bounds, but in expectation, you can ensure that you cover at least that many points. And of course, it's more general because these PVs can be non-uniform. This is just a uniform case, okay? Cool, any questions? All right. Okay, so our results for priority K supply. Okay, so Arvind says they don't have concentration bonds. Okay, cool. Thank you, Arvind. All right, 
Um, so our results are, so a nine approximation for priority case supply roof outliers. Note that this nine is like the same nine Harris et al had for a good reason. And um, we actually, so if you just feed our algorithm to this framework of Carr and Vampala, uh, we get a nine approximation for chance gate coverage too. This Carr Vampala framework from Stock 2000 is like a super cool technique I learned working on this project. So I refer you to read that if you don't already know this. And actually our result is uh, something better. We give a framework for like priority uh, supplier with outliers when you have arbitrary constraints on what your solution set should be. What do I mean by that? So uh, let's say matroid supplier. Okay, so what is that? It means that uh, given a matroid defined on these possible facility locations, what you return should be an independent set in this matroid. So as an example, you can think of it that Hey, you know, maybe this possible facility location have some colors and then you can't include a facility of the same color more than once in your solution, something like that. So that's partition matrix. Okay. It's a pretty natural extension. Another natural extension is knapsack supplier with outliers. Okay. So let me tell you what that is. So let's say each of these uh, facility places to actually put a center on those, you have to pay something. So let's say places in the center of the residential areas are more expensive, places in the outskirts are less expensive, and then you have a limited budget. Let's say in this picture, if you have a limit of um, three units of money, then you can either buy one expensive center or you can put, or you can buy three not expensive centers. So that depends, okay? So for this problem, we actually give a 14 approx. So you see the nine is bumped up to 14. And this is because of some technical issue that we had. And one more important thing about this nine approximation is that if you have your all of your radiative be powers of two, this is actually five approximation, okay? If you have two types of radio, it's three approximation, which is tight. That being said, we don't know if nine is the right answer. So there's a huge gap between this three and nine, right? So if you're looking for open problems, here it is. This nine approximation, after my talk, I hope you can, uh, you have a gist of like what our uh, algorithm is and whether you can maybe improve it or prove lower bounds. Uh, and you would know what technical issues we had that bumped up this nine to 14 for knapsack. So hopefully you can solve uh, the problem there. So. Okay, cool. Any questions before I move to describing the algorithm? About any of the definitions or any of the results? All right, let's see the algorithm. Okay. So we start with uh, the hot bomb from algorithm for case supplier. Here, we don't have any priorities, no outliers. All right, so I'm gonna go over this algorithm line by line, so don't worry. So on the right-hand side, I have this toy example of facilities and clients. So uh, let's say, so at first, let's say all the clients are uncovered. And then you would start with some arbitrary uncovered client U, okay? So let's say I pick this one, this is U1, right? And then you break it, break an egg on it. So what do I mean by that? So let's say uh, you draw a ball of radius to opt around it. What is opt? Opt is the value of the optimal solution. You might think that, hey, you know, we don't have it, but don't worry about it, you can do a binary search. So just you know, you have guessed the value of the optimal solution, you know it, you draw a ball of radius to opt around this. So this is to opt. And then you call all the clients in this ball to be covered. So this is covered, this is covered, this is covered. Cool. And you keep track of them in this egg. Uh, what's more, you draw a ball of radius just opt around this U1. 
This is the egg yolk. And what you keep from this egg yolk is the set of facilities in this egg yolk. Egg yolk. We keep track of them in this curly P. So curly P has the set of all these egg yolks, facilities in these egg yolks, okay? So one more time, you pick this U again, you break the egg, you cover the clients in the egg, you find the yolk again, do it again, until all the clients are covered. Any questions so far about what these eggs are? I haven't said how you're gonna use this eggs to like solve this problem yet. Cool. All right. So here's the thing. So you just need to find a subset of at most K facilities that hits each egg yolk. So in each egg yolk, just pick one facility, okay? And well, the thing is, this S has to exist, right? And why is that? It's pretty simple. So think about it like this. The optimal solution has to cover the centers of the egg yolks, right? Has to cover this, this, this. So it has to have some facility in each of the yolks. So you're guaranteed to find a solution. Okay, pretty cool, right? And this is actually a three approximation. And this is also simple to see. Okay, so let's see. So for example, take this client V, okay? So this client V has to travel two opt to get to the center of the egg. From there, has to travel one opt to get to the facility. So it has to travel at most three opt. You're good, you have a three approximation. Cool, right? Any questions? Awesome. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna use every inch of the white space on this slide and tell you right here what Plesnik's algorithm for priority case supplier is. This is basically just the same algorithm, except that when you're choosing your use, you don't pick them arbitrarily. You pick them in increasing order of their neighborhood radii. I mean, there are some tiny details that I'm like sweeping under the rug, like here, instead of like drawing a ball of opt, you draw a ball of RU, things like that. But like morally, it's the same. I can go into more detail, but I don't think that's necessary. But if you'd like, I could totally just tell you why that also is a three approximation. Or like what the algorithm exactly is. But yeah, I think the takeaway would be that it's like pretty much hot bomb schmoise, but you do this uh, instead of arbitrary or order, you do it in increasing order of radii. Okay, cool. Right, so how about case supplier with outliers? So you've seen case supplier, priority case supplier. Now I wanna see case supplier with outliers, okay. So here, because you're not obliged to cover all the points, you can just leave some of the eggs uncovered, right? So let's say each egg has a value. So its value is the number of clients in that egg. Okay, so here the value is three, here the value is two, here the value is three again, okay? So your goal is to hit each yolk at most once. So you just leave some of the yolks and you would want the value of the eggs you've hit to be at least m so you want to cover overall at least m clients this way okay simple huh but the argument that we had for like s has to exist here breaks down when you have others so what do we do okay good news there's something that we could do still um okay so here's the thing suppose you're given fractional coverages of the clients in average of optimal solutions okay so that's a mouthful let me elaborate on this um so let's say you just have three optimal solutions s1 s2 s3 okay and then let's say client v is covered by two of them and left as an outlier by one of them so you, you would say its average coverage is like 
two thirds, something like that. So you kind of want to get a sense of like how much these points are covered by the optimal solutions. And actually, if you're given these coverages for the points and you choose the center of these X in decreasing cover order, then uh, these two papers prove that such S exists. What do I mean by such S? An S that uh, is size that most K and covers at least M points. Great. Any questions so far? Something has to be bothering you at this point. Okay, you know, we don't have the optimal solution. So how do we get this cuff? Good thing is, you know, getting this cuff from the LP is good enough. What these papers prove. Great. So you just have to solve the LP, get a fractional solution, compute cuff. Do this. That's it. Okay. So let me show you this LP. It's pretty simple, actually. So for each of these possible facility locations, you have this variable yf that denotes like to what extent you're opening them as a facility from zero to one, one is completely open. And of course you're allowed to put at most K facilities. So you define these um, auxiliary variables coverages for each point. So here's what it is. So look at each facility, look at the ones that can cover you in distance alpha rb and then basically you're looking at how much how much fractionally how many facilities there are that could cover you here right uh so minor detail is that like this coveys have to be at most one so this is basically an at most but doesn't matter and you would want that at least fractionally at least endpoints you want to be covered okay cool any questions Nice. Yeah, I mean, I uh, explained the priority case of layer outliers LP because the normal supplier with outliers is basically just the same uniform radii. Okay, so here's the question. So if you want to do a priority case of layer with outliers, if you want to do the priority thing and go with Plesnik, you have to do the sorting in order of radii. If you want to do the CGK and Harris et al. work, you have to go with the ordered cuff. So what do we do? Should it be cuff? Should it be radii? Which one's correct? Okay, so I'm going to tell you what we do. And from here on, suppose the radii are just powers of two for simplicity. Okay, cool. So here's the thing. So you would just need to group the points based on their priority radii. So let's say, so I'm going to tell you a bit what this graph is, but for now, let's say I group the radius one points together, radius two points together, radius four points together. Okay. And then I do this CGK and Harris et al. Uh, algorithm on each of these groups separately. So I get these X centers, right? So these X centers are the nodes in this new graph that I'm constructing. And then each of these X centers have a value associated to the number of clients in that egg, right? So put that value on each node. And then you have edges that go across layers, okay? So at from uh, bottom to top, uh, if they're close, basically, for some definition of close, doesn't matter. So um, the goal is to find K disjoint paths that collects maximum value. Okay, now I'm gonna elaborate on this a bit. So let's say, you know, I open a center close to this one, right? So here's why we have this exponential uh, classification of this radii is because if I open a center here, this guy is close to this one, it can easily afford to just travel all the way to the center. Same with this one, because it has a path to this one and its radius is much, 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 much bigger. The distance it has to travel to get all the way down to this facility is not really that much. 
So it would come down and just get connected to that facility, right? So basically that's why you're looking for these K paths that collect maximum value. The destroying this year is because you don't want to overcount value. That's it. It's a brief overview of what this is. Okay, any questions? I've been a little bit vague about many things, I think. So So yeah, just basically just to elaborate is a LP aware reduction. So you have used the LP solution to construct this, right? Because CGK and uh, higher set all depend on this LP solution, right? And then all you need to do is to like show that if I have a fractional solution for that LP, this translates to an integral solution for this problem and the next step to, is to say, hey, I, can, I can actually find this integral solution, okay? So that is how the reduction kind of works. Okay, okay. so here's the part when you say that you can actually solve this problem. Uh, it's a standard flow problem, I'm sure. You all know this. So you have this DAG, you have a super source, you have a super sink. And then you have vertex capacities. You want to go over each vertex at most once i mean the amount of flow should be at most one and then you have these values remember and you want to collect maximum value so that makes it a mean cost max flow problem okay all right so let's say k was two you solved it you got these two paths to be the output of your max flow algorithm so here what you do is you open your centers your solution is going to be some facility in the egg yolk of these uh points here the, the egg centers here right so you take the bottom most ones you open a center there and you basically assign everyone in this path to this one center so this one is just one okay any questions about how this is Constructed. Yeah. Is the reduction clear and like how you get from uh, how you get a priority case and outlier solution out of this uh, flow solution? Yeah, thanks for the thumbs up, Leo. <laughs> All right, cool. Then let's move on. Okay, so what happens if you have matroid center? So here you can't just open some arbitrarily center in the egg yolk, right? You have to like make sure you bring this uh these facilities into your calculation. So you make notes for all of these facilities and you put an edge between an egg center and a facility if that facility is in its yolk. Okay. And to reach the sink, you have to go through these facilities. So you have to make a choice which facility you want to go through. Okay. All right. So basically, the thing is that uh, you have only um, connected the facilities to the sink. So here you only have facilities connected to the sink, right? And then if you are sending a flow through a bunch of facilities, you would want them to be inside the uh, be an independent set of the given matroid, right? Okay, so that sounds like a complicated problem. It does have a solution though. So this is one cool thing. Another cool thing that I learned in this project was that you can solve flow problems when you have matroid constraints on the ingoing, incoming and outgoing edges of vertices. It's a pretty cool paper of Chikori et al. And yeah, you can just use that and uh, they have this, um, they also prove that uh, the LP is integral and we crucially need that in our reduction because we want to say that, you know, if you have a fractional LP solution that translates to an integral solution for this pathfinding problem, right? So great. Awesome. We just use that. It's a pretty cool work. And yeah, any questions so far?
Okay, yeah, sure. You find a path, it has to go through a facility, you put the um, centers on those facilities that the flow goes through. Okay, cool. All right, so how about NAPSAC Center? So here's the thing. All right, so what was NAPSAC Center? Uh, the solution that you have, uh, look at the flows that go into the sink. Let's say this facility and this facility, okay? So when you sum up their cost, cost it has to fit in your budget. So that was the NABZAC version of the problem, okay? So what do we do here? The issue is we don't know how to solve this. Like even, if, of course, if you allow some slight violation in the budget, let's say, we don't know how to solve the flow problem. So that's an interesting question. If anyone knows of anything that might work, please let me know. And I would love to chat about this. So that's one thing you could work on when you go out of this talk. And yeah, so that is why we get the bump from 9 to 14 in the approximation. So this bump happens because we want to output a bunch of trees instead of a DAG. Because when you have a bunch of trees, you can solve this like K path max value problem just with a dynamic program on the trees. So that's easy. We know how to solve that. That's why we had to bump up the approximation ratio. Okay. But this is not the end of our problems. Actually, the more important problem is that the LP, so we're depending on the LP, right? But the LP for this problem has unbounded integrality gap. So you can't get anything out of it, right? So how did we get our 14 approximation even? We had to use ellipsoid. So um, basically you have to assume that uh, you're doing an ellipsoid on the uh, convex hull of the integral solutions, which you don't have, of course. So you get this curve and you try to use it. If you fail, you have to cut the curve. So basically you have to provide to ellipsoid uh, an inequality that any coverage that is made from the integral polytope satisfies, but this given coverage does not. And you have to do this round of procedure. So uh, that actually is based on a paper uh, department and I had in uh, ICAD 2018. So basically this is one example when just using uh, the LP doesn't work. So, uh, for example, the work of Harris et al. for um, the pro uh, what is it? Was it the probabilistic um, K center problem doesn't work here. So we would have to do all of this, do ellipsoid and all of that, and feed it to the carve and polar framework to get an approximation for that problem for the chance uh, nabs that coverage. Okay, so what's next? As I mentioned, it would be interesting to close the gap uh, between the approximation ratio between nine and three. Um, so n let alone lower bounds, like we don't even know an LP integrality gap of worse than three. So even that would be interesting to see, to see if uh, there's an actually a limitation in our LP, rounding, LP rounding approach because of this integrality gap, okay? And well, the NAVSAC for problem, as I mentioned, another interesting work that uh, came out recently is Priority K Median by Mahabadi and Vakilian. And in that work, they give us 784 approximation. So, what's that? Um, seven is the amount they dilate the priority radii, and 84 is the um, K median cost approximation to get. And it's a local search algorithm with four swaps. It's based on a local search algorithm with four swaps of REO at all, if you're interested to read that. So that, that'd be interesting to see. Okay, so next you can think about K-media. Can we improve that maybe? All right, that was it. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. Uh, that was great. I mean, I have plenty of questions, but I'll leave someone else first if if they have any. 
Yes, Mariam, very nice talk. Um, so I have, a, can, you, can you explain the Metroid flow problem and the result of Chekuri et al, Chekuri et al again? Oh, can, you, right. can, you define, can you redefine the Metroid flow problem? go back all right cool um so the matroid flow problem that we have here is a very special case so here's the thing so um you would want the flows that come through any subset of the edges let's say take these two edges we have to have it for any subset you would look at the rank of the facilities associated with these edges and you would want the flow to be bounded by this rank and you have to have it for all the subsets of the incoming edges of the sink. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Like uh, the Chakuri et al. paper can do, uh, can have this, uh, these kinds of constraints for incoming and outgoing edges of like all the vertices. It's pretty cool. I see. And, and uh, do you remember what the broad idea in, in proving integrality is? Proving integrality is, um, you know, the math you, you... made sense when I read it, but. I don't. So, so, so this is the paper that talks about polymetroids, right? Yes, yes, polymetroid of flows. Yes. Yeah. So, so is there a? I see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, maybe not all the details, but do you remember the high level ideas? I've not read this paper, and I do think I agree with you. I think it's a really nice uh, piece of work. So, uh, you know, I yeah. Do you have some high level intuition about what they do? Uh, I've honestly, I've read the paper, but like, I, and the math made sense. But if I want to give you like, oh. This is the core idea of like mm. how it works. I'm not sure. Right, I see. Okay. But at okay, some thank point, uh -huh. I, I would like to know. Sure. Okay. And by, by the way, is, so, so is, has your your current paper what you're speaking about? Is it published already? Uh, it's gonna appear in ICAP. Sounds good. Okay. Okay, and th we thank, have an archive uh -huh. version up. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, it's very nice work, uh, Mariam. Thank mm. you, and my group and I. You know, uh, yeah, we will certainly read it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I would love to chat offline about any of these improvements, or like if you have any ideas for the open questions. Yeah, I have an an open question. Uh, so you know, when it comes to outliers and fairness, the most natural thing that comes to mind is the the lottery model introduced by. Uh, by a paper of Arvin in approx uh, 2017. I don't know if you if you have seen that paper, where, where you basically want to to construct an eff efficiently sampleable distribution such that uh, you every point is not an outlier with a certain probability, with a certain given probability. There was a, an improvement late, lately by Anneke et al. in NIPCO 2020. Uh, I remember, I think I read the Anagarol one. Wasn't it uh, the thing that you would want to, from each color, uh, each color of the clients you would want to cover? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, they considered uh, that version as well. But uh, yeah, so compared to the other stochastic result that, uh, that you talked about, the difference there is that you, I think you can guarantee a specific, a specific number of, of outliers. Uh, you will cover at most 10 points with probability one and not not an expectation so yeah th th that paper the the negative paper does does that so you take an algorithm for uh case center without liars and through a round or cut uh, framework you produce an algorithm for the stochastic version i don't know if you if you have considered that oh yeah, yeah. i remember it was really good uh, Impala framework too. So I remember they had it for like when you want to cover at least M L many points for color L, yeah, and they yeah. do have this probabilistic result. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember they did this Carve Impala thing that we also did. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. So yeah, I and I think that the difference compared to what you mentioned is that you'll you'll satisfy exactly the the outliers constraint. And not the, not an expectation as the Zansky K coverage problem. Yeah. So just like the Anig et al, uh, our algorithm where you have the exact thing, you can just feed it to the Carve and Paula framework, and it gives you the probabilistic thing too. So the kind of a probabilistic setting similar to uh, Arvind's papers. Yeah. That one. Yeah. 
yeah definitely you should read carbon polo paper if you haven't it's super cool it's a stock 2000 paper uh yeah and anyone else having having questions Yeah, I apologize for the background noise for mowing your lawns. <laughs> I have one more comment. So the uh, uh, in your last slide, where you mentioned uh, future directions, mm -hmm. uh, the 7,84 approximation, we, we believe that this can be trivially uh, extended, not extended, improved to a 9,9. .9. So that that, oh, yeah, local, yeah. that local search there. I, I don't know if you have noticed that too. That yeah, I have noticed uh, that too. <laughs> it's, it's an overkill. I don't know why they do it. Yeah, yeah. so many people have noticed this actually. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, funny. Yeah, like yeah. every time I tell someone, they're like, hey, can't you do that? Uh, like LP rounding to get like this nine comma something. Yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, yeah, it, yeah I know. <laughs> you can use the charical, charical leafing and get the nine. Yeah, the charical leafing, free. right? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So there's this one. So actually, a huge hint to this was this K Center K Median work that Alam Der did. Have yeah. you read that one? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's there. Come on. Yeah, true. Uh, okay, if no one else has any more questions, uh, Mariam, thank you again. It was great. Thank you for having me. It was fun. Uh, thank you again, Mariam. Yeah, thank you for having me. It was cool. And hopefully we'll do this next semester as well. We will keep going with the series. Okay, cool. Uh, okay. Goodbye, everyone. Bye.